Hey everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with KillerSites.com and KillerPHP.com. In this video blog, I want to talk about choosing the programming language given the type of career you want to lead. So, this is based on a conversation I had earlier today, actually. I was in a bookstore and uh, one of the people working there approached me and he was an acquaintance of somebody I knew and uh, my friend told him that uh, that was a major nerd so he wanted to ask questions you know he was thinking he wants to get into web development well he wants to get into programming he wasn't sure which way to go there's so many you know so many languages C++ C Sharp, Java, Ruby, Objective-C etc so it goes on PHP of course it goes on so and he also wanted to uh, know whether or not getting a degree made sense or uh, should he just, you know, should he get a degree like a, like a college degree where it's like a one-year program type of deal where you get a little certificate or should he go to university for three, four years and get like, you know, a, a computer science degree or, you know, a software engineering degree. Or, what, or whether you should just go at it alone. He's, you know, he wants to know what are the job prospects, what are the options, what the situation is. So I'm going to answer all those questions in this video. So if you're, you know, if you're looking to learn web design or web programming rather, and you're trying to figure out whether or not you should go to school or not, and the type of schools, here we go. So uh, first major point. Uh, number one, the language that you choose, and I've, I've probably talked about this in other videos, at least in some blog posts, but the language that you use will affect the type of industry uh, or the type of business you get into. So, for instance, if you're doing a Java or a .NET type of work, .NET is, you know, it's typically C Sharp, which is a very similar language to Java. Um, then you're, you're going to find yourself more likely than not working either for large corporations or for government. And in that situation, if you want to get jobs there, the, having the university degree, the comp sci or the uh, software engineering degree is, is, very, is very helpful. It's almost a requirement unless you're highly experienced with years of experience. Back in the late 90s and the mid 90s when this whole information revolution was really getting going, in those days they didn't care whether or not you had a degree as a software engineer or whatnot because there was such a huge demand and there, was hard, there were hardly any qualified people that they would take anybody. So uh, in those days for large multinational corporations or for government type of jobs, are pretty much, uh, I, I would imagine they're done unless, again, you're highly experienced. So yeah, if that attracts you, you want to look for large corporations, government, you have to, you're probably better off with a, well, you're not probably, you are better off with a technology-related university degree. Um, and so you're looking at probably the Java language, uh, you're looking at, uh, uh, C sharp, the .NET technologies. Uh, those are the, that's where they they really rule. Um, not I'm not to say that you don't see PHP or Ruby or other languages used in the enterprise. And the enterprise is this is another word for big business or big government. But generally speaking, they lean towards those technologies uh, for all kinds of reasons. I'm not going to get into now. Um, and has you know these reasons have doesn't have much to do with the technology itself. It has some it has everything to do with the business positioning of these technologies. What I mean is that you know, the, the Microsoft platform .NET, C Sharp, etc., and Java platform have basically established themselves as the uh, go-to languages. They either go one way or the other .NET, Java .NET, C Sharp, or Java uh, for large enterprise. If, on the other hand, you're more interested in nimble programming, PHP, Ruby, that sort of thing, then um, and you're you're not interested in working for large corporations and uh, uh, government, 
then the need for a degree diminishes tremendously because small and medium-sized businesses typically don't care so much for degrees, especially small businesses. Uh, they want they want is, is experience and skill. You got you know you got to be able to, you got to show them what you can do, and uh, and to me that's more honest. That's real business. You know, for me, I'm a big believer in the concept of the meritocracy. I've spoken to, to this. I've spoken of this before, where I believe that people should be rewarded based on their accomplishments, on their skills, not on who they know or whether they took this degree or that degree. Because I can tell you from personal experience. Uh, uh, just because you have a degree doesn't mean you're a good programmer. In fact, many people with degrees are not very good programmers. And the reason being, I think it has to do with the fact that uh, a lot of people get into tech degrees or doing it because they want to secure good work, not because they necessarily are passionate about programming or being a software developer. Whereas people who are self-taught, they're always the best because they're really into it, they research it, they're passionate about it. And they're very good. So when I hire people, I, I, I never even consider whether or not they have a degree. I couldn't care less, to be honest with you. For me, it's all about um, you know what they know and, and their experience. And I always do code reviews, and I check what they've done, and I, and I talk to them, and I ask them you know, questions. And I, I'm able to judge fairly quickly uh, how experienced and capable somebody is. Just, you know, but, I'm fortunate enough to have been a software developer for many years, so I have that ability, you know, I have that knowledge. Um, what's the next thing? Okay, in terms of the types of schools, again, if you're looking to work for large corporations, you're looking to uh, get a job in that respect, instead of a one-year certificate, they will prefer somebody with a university degree especially a comp sci degree or a computer engineering degree or something. So keep that in mind. So if you're deciding I'm going to spend 10 grand to go to a uh, technical college and you and you want to get a government job, unless you, you know, you know, depending on the country, depending on the circumstances, you're better off to get the university degree, although the commitment for a university degree is four years. And the reason you're better off is not because you're going to become a better programmer. Actually, I think that the guys coming out of technical college is going to be better because they focus on programming. No, the reason that you have a better chance is because in very large corporations, in big government, uh, they have a lot of bureaucracy and red tape. And you got human resource departments, and they got to follow the playbook. And the playbook is you hire a web programmer. They have to have you know bachelor of science or a comp computer science science degree. They prefer that to people with technical college background, even though the technical college people, from my experience, are typically better. Not always the case, because you have passionate people who are going to computer engineering or com computer science, for sure. But just keep that in mind. Um, finally, if you're looking to become a freelancer or you strictly want to work for small startups, small businesses, you know, I... I Forget about the, you know, degrees are, are, are almost, they're totally irrelevant. Not almost totally irrelevant. They are totally irrelevant. People don't care. Again, it really comes down to your chops, how good you are. So I suggest that you just spend your time uh, developing applications, whether it be PHP sites, base sites, or Ruby, or Objective-C for iPad, iOS development, whatever, what have you. Uh, that's my suggestion and just start doing work you know just pick a language well first thing you do is you you look at the various languages that are out there and you look at the various styles of programming because if you're writing Java code versus PHP it's typically different types of software uh, if you're writing Objective-C which is the language for iPad and iPhone development again it's a different beast it's a different style of programming and uh, it comes down to taste. One is not necessarily better than the other. It really depends on what you want to do, what your preferences are. For instance, in my career, um, in the last, especially, especially as I got more experienced, I would walk into a project as I was a freelancer and I would look at the project requirements that the client had, what they wanted to do, and then from there, I would choose the language rather than 
saying, I'm a Java guy, how can we use Java to solve your problem? I wasn't like that. I was the guy who said, okay, what's your problem? Let's pick the good language. Sometimes it was Java, sometimes it was PHP, sometimes it was, you know, whatever, lingo. There's all kinds of different uh, things that I approached at the time. So uh, you don't necessarily have to be a jack of all trades as I was becoming in the end. That comes with experience. But what I would suggest, you're starting off and you're not sure which language to choose. First, consider where ultimately you want to be. Big corporations or you want to do startup, more dynamic type of stuff. You know, one's more stable, secure. One's more dynamic, exciting. You know, uh, stable, secure, you know, Java, .NET, big corporations, government. More exciting, PHP, Ruby, Objective-C, perhaps. Um, and then you keep that in mind. Then you might want to just start playing with the different languages. Spend two weeks learning PHP. Two weeks playing solid Java, two weeks Objective C, etc. Now you're not going to, you know, really, you're not going to know the languages too well after two weeks unless you're already experienced in programming. Because programming knowledge transfers, right? Uh, if you know Java, learning PHP is going to be trivial. Uh, if you know C++, again, jumping into Java will be much easier than going at it from scratch, etc. Because there's a lot of similarities between languages, give or take. Anyway, so yeah, that's what I would do. I would uh, spend a little bit of time with languages that attract you, at least in principle, so you really get an understanding of what they're about. And then from there, you can decide which one you want to concentrate on. Concentrate on that language. Start learning it. Even if you go the route where you're going to go big business and government and so forth, uh, I would still start writing the code on your own just to get a head start, because at the end of the day, you know, academic knowledge is just the beginning of knowledge. It's just the first 10%. The real knowledge comes from doing. Doing is huge. And I, I've uh, used this analogy in previous videos. I used to box, I was a martial artist, and, and I would tell people, you know, one, one three minute, three minute, one three round, uh, sparring, heavy, hardcore, you know, full contact sparring session is worth six months of training. One street fight is worth one year of training. So I always advise people to go out, spar, 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 spar. Uh, if you get into a fight, well, you know, I'd be, I was a bouncer, so I, I learned a lot being a bouncer. I would get into, you know, we're always doing stuff, uh, you know, as a bouncer, you, you, you find yourself... Uh, Anyway, that's it. So uh, I hope this video was useful, this video blog, uh, for those who are just starting out. And, uh, uh, oh yeah, one last point. I would also look at what's hot going forward. The big mistake is to look backwards, you know, meaning looking at languages are, are, are popular, have been popular for a decade, because they're probably fading. The way technology goes is that languages come into favor, they get hot, and then they slowly fade, and some other languages, some other language replaces it. So for instance, back in the 90s, when Java came out, and Java came out as a simplified uh, language to simplify the process of development over C++, and the C++ people would, would, would poo-poo over Java, oh, Java, you know, it's, it's, it's yeah, blah, 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 it's got all these problems. Um, yeah. Java is, you know, was not, you know, there's certain things that C++ did much better than Java, but at the end of the day, Java was the hot language. It grew, and that's where all the money was. That's where all the jobs were, it was in Java. So you have to look today. What, where is the popularity? Where is it going? I'm telling you where it's going. It's PHP, it's Ruby, uh, it's a, and, and the super hot stuff is Objective-C and uh, iPad, iPhone development, and Android development, and Android development... Um, I've never done it, but from what I understand, it's a subset of Java. So if you know Java, you get into Android, you know, smartphone development and pad pad development, you know, like Motorola, Zoom, that kind of thing. And I think Android is now the most popular uh, operating system for smartphones, but Apple's huge. So, you know, an Apple, Apple iOS, you know, iOS is the operating system for uh, iPads and iPhones, and of course that's um, Objective C. So uh, anyway, yeah. So go for what's hot. Figure out which where you want to see yourself in terms of your career, whether big government, 
small, medium, or on your own as a freelancer, and that tells you what language you want to go into. Anyway, I hope that was useful. Ciao.